Here we are with what was an inevitable video really, being a substance related YouTuber. So here we are doing my official substance tier list video, where, if you didn't figure it out already. So it's pretty self explanatory, you just basically rank things from S tier to F tier, but I've uh, given mine a little unique flavour, so God tier, semi appropriate. Love it me, take it or leave it, be ass with that, and F that, as I'm not allowed to swear with in the first two minutes of YouTube videos anymore. We truly are in the dark era of YouTube at the minute, rest in peace, the old glory days of being able to say whatever you want, but that's another story. Well, I'll stop beating around the bush now and just jump straight into it. First of all, I'm going to rank the classic LSD in God tier. I'm going to justify it basically on my own personal experiences, I don't really want to do anything objective, although there will be some sort of semi-objective points here. I'm saying LSD for God tier because this has been probably the most profound substance for me personally. I've had all of my, well, the majority of my sort of transcendental breakthrough experiences through LSD. I had my very first ego death on LSD in uh, 2017. I actually had two ego deaths that year, which completely just shaped the whole trajectory of my life. I think about them every single day and how utterly mind-bending they were in the best possible way. Of course, it took quite a lot of integration to understand truly what was going on. I, I had absolutely no idea what an ego death was at all. Um, so when I experienced it the first time, all I did for those months and months leading up to my next one was just researching what what on earth is actually going on. I just typed, I just kept typing in on Google like, smoking cannabis on LSD made me completely lose my sense of reality and put me in this unbelievable um, sort of breaking out of the matrix style experience and I tried tried looking around for every, anyone who possibly had this sort of experience for because I mean I had no idea psychedelics went that deep um, until that happened it completely just shattered my whole paradigm of um, material reality and uh, I started to see started to see my life and the universe as sort of a big grand dream really and it completely shook up my sort of atheistic notions of um, of life and the universe um, didn't turn me into like a Christian or anything, but it definitely um, sort of uh, jettisoned me down the spiritual path. So that's for me why uh, LSD is God tier, because quite literally it gave me a sense of, or a flavour of what it's like to be a god in some sense. No god complex at all, like some fucking light Yagami level shit. <laughs> um, it just made me sort of realise um, how powerful mind the universe and just our imagination really is which sort of made me see life in a deeper less material logical way next on the agenda is alcohol which i've bunged in take it or leave it because although i have had a lot of fun with alcohol in the past and it definitely is um quite suited for certain recreational scenarios and it does also just sort of lower you lower your inhibitions and being me when I was younger, when I first started drinking in like, I think I first ever got pissed in 2014 uh, at a house party. I'd never even, fully enough, I'll tell you a story right now. I'd never, before that, I was like a pure hermit. I literally just lived in my room and just watched anime, played video games. Just your, your classic nerd, really. Um, like introvert to a fault didn't really do much with mates never really went outside um well i did like i went outside but i didn't go and knock about with mates in summer really except for sort of my older mates who i was mates with mainly just online and going on skype playing games with who ended up doing loads of videos with uh, around 10 years ago in the early the early era of vivek which was known as colonel cubbage where i just did like you know generic stuff let's plays a bridge series which wasn't really generic it was quite creative at the time but uh, looking back it was it was very rough the way i went about doing it but it was just one part of my life that uh, is very much over now thankfully um i, I was genuinely very self-conscious had low self-esteem um I, i'd been to like a few parties beforehand but it really freaked me out everyone was drinking they were all a lot older than me and my mates at the time so just so i, I just felt so I just felt so alienated by, by nothing to do with them. Like I just was alienating myself. It was all, I was creating my own hell pretty much. And then, funnily enough, in 2014 was when Sonic Lost World came out on the Wii U. And I was so utterly disappointed by the game because I was a massive Sonic fan at the time and they just kept dropping the ball with every single release. I was so gutted about it that I ended up going to this massive party um, 
that uh, I think I was in year 10 or year 11, um, that one of the lads was having in my year, and he basically just invited everyone from school. It was absolutely mental. It was like our version of Project X, pretty much. And I literally decide, just decided to go to it. And it was the very first time I had like more than one, more than one tinny. I drank like a few beers and I actually got slightly pissed. And then that just again changed the whole trajectory of my life. Much how taking LSD did, or you know, taking any substance for the first time that had an effect on me did. And yeah, whilst I, I don't really massively enjoy drinking very often, I, I always end up just overdoing it and being sick. I literally had like a reunion with my mates of a weekend and. Again, overdid it. Forget I, as as I continue drinking, I forget how pissed I actually am. And then I just end up just end up chundering, being sick everywhere, and just having a fucking horrible time. And I cannot hack hangovers at all. It just gives me serious beer fear as well. I've just wondered what I was chatting shit about the other the, the night before, wondering what I got up to. Um, but that being said, it really did open me up more to new experiences. When I did get pissed for the first time, I came out of my shell more. Um, I started embracing my extroverted side and it just allows you to just I don't know socialize easier especially being an introverted like sort of withdrawn person um again also had trouble speaking to girls I never had like many relationships I didn't have well, I didn't have any relationships at the time at all that allowed me to be more confident with myself um just changed out my whole life really uh getting pissed for the first time and yeah I've, I've had some fun going out with my mates on lash and getting up to some mad shit with alcohol, but <laughs> like many psycho eventual psychonauts, it just doesn't scratch the itch of um, experiencing an altered state. It just really is sort of on the lower end, and it can be very destructive, of course. Um, I should probably touch upon sort of more the objective uh, qualities of why I've done, of why I've ranked these things, because obviously LSD is just so much safer and more profound and amplifies your consciousness, whereas. Um, alcohol nulls your consciousness and yeah that for that reason it's very destructive and also it just feels fucking horrible you're literally toxifying your body and no wonder people have people like you know mad drinkers who are still like drinking heavily at like age 70 and like they just look absolutely fucked they only look like they're about 110 years old because it's really not good for your mind body or spirit if you overdo it but can be fun in moderation i guess next up on the be asked with that ranking is uh cocaine oh. which yeah I guess I've had fun with it in the past. When you try it for the first time, especially when you mix it with beer, even though I wouldn't exactly advise that, it's pretty bad for you. It produces cocathylene, which is extra toxic and amplifies the effects of both of them even more so because it sort of creates like a, a new substance in your body. It's really not good for your liver or just in general um, for you mentally to overdo it. I do understand the appeal though, uh, especially, especially in the UK. We're, I think in the UK we are obsessed with coke. I think I swear, like I swear, there was a study done a few years ago where like Scotland has the greatest amount of cocaine abuse in the whole world, um, and I wouldn't think England's either f far behind either. Like, mate, the amount of people who just literally the whole life is basically just working through the week, and it gets to Friday, Saturday, and they just basically drink themselves to death and sniff bare lines of bake which is what we call coke uh, in england or at least we do in northwest lad uh, and that sort of just becomes a lot of people's lives uh, which is really so so insane isn't it uh, i don't think any other country just smashes it as much as we do i, I understand the appeal because uh, there's been i mean there is a sense of euphoria um, and confidence lifting when you have them and to be honest yeah physically it can feel quite nice after a few beers but i hate i've, I've always hated just when i have it raw if i've ever just had beak by itself it just feels absolutely horrible to me and I, I think um I, I react to it so much differently to other people um in that sort of scenario where i'm just having it sort of by itself without any beers i just become really withdrawn and tight and it's just well uncomfortable and, and paranoid just a serious sense of dysphoria there's a, a bit of a buzz to begin with and sort of like yeah the dopamine sort of flooding your brain sort of feels quite uh it feels great at first but then I, 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 um, naturally afterwards it just brings me tight makes me tighter and i just feel like tuned in to a to the nth degree and i just can't even speak can't get my words out i just feel so stuck in my own head but i didn't put it in f that fuck that well yeah i can i can swear now thank god I didn't put it in the lowest tier because I've had some fun with it in the past and when you again, again when you first try it it's like oh it's pretty cool this and yeah I've had it at festivals and just sort of enjoyed it but the glory days are definitely over for that and um, also again damages your nose, damages your mind, your body if you overdo it too much. Uh, yeah but I can see why people enjoy it and I mean who am I to tell anyone else what to do with their free time. So yeah putting that in be ash with that lad. 
Next up is Frags, or Siggies, Durries, Burts, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, I don't mind a Siggy when I'm like, I've had a few drinks, or just randomly decide, oh, I might have a bit of, a bit of tobacco, me. Uh, although sometimes I just hate the taste of it, and uh, the Nicky Rush can be horrible, where it just feels like you're in bed, dizzy. Uh, standing up like it's like how you stand up too fast and you fucking all your vision goes. I get that sometimes if I chong a chong a durry too fast, but can be enjoyable on certain certain substances, especially when you're wired or on MD. That can be quite nice, uh, quite soothing. But goes without saying that there are a lot of again health risks with smoking, uh, especially I, I don't know if I think smoking straight, um, like ones you get in like a pack, are probably worse than say smoking rollies. I'd say seems to be a lot of um a lot more chemicals in it than just straight up smoking a rolly just something yeah a rolled up cigarette but who am i to say i could be wrong to be fair um i'm not a ciggy expert but i will put in take it or leave it because i don't hate them don't love them i'll just have one if i fancy it next up is caffeine which i put in love it me although i just I just sort of like it but i wouldn't put in take it or leave it because i do enjoy it um i wouldn't even say i'm putting it in because of this experience i'm not really a massive sort of fan of stimulants and they also make me just feel a bit a bit weird and um paranoid at some t- uh, sometimes if i overdo it and i don't like energy drinks like monster or whatever that highly caffeinated drinks like that caffeinated beverages but i do enjoy coffee and the taste of it um Ice coffees are nice, warm coffees nice on a, a cold winter's night. But, I mean, yeah, the actual stimulant itself, I wouldn't say I love at all. I mean, it's alright. Uh, I should have put an or, it's an it's alright category, but, oh well, tier makers restricted me to one, two, three, four, five ranks, as if I couldn't say five and had to count them. Why is that actually wrong with me? My brain doesn't work anymore. Might have to get a coffee down me, to be fair. <laughs> Next up is Wayne, or Purple Drank, or whatever you want to call it. I think it's mainly just sort of codeine, isn't it? Like codeine, cough syrup, and some some weird like fizzy drink, like Sprite, 7-Up, whatever you want, whatever your poison, poison of choice is, really. Um, yeah, I guess take it or leave it, it's alright, I've never, I've had it before, I don't really think I ex- like, had any like pleasurable effects off it, other than feeling like sort of relaxed. Although I had one of my very worst moments of all time on Lane, which was when my f- was first sort of like getting with my ex-girlfriend and I decided to order a Domino's, but they didn't deliver it to my house and thinking I wasn't wasn't under the effects of the Lane at all, I ended up driving to go and pick it up, which is which is something that you just do not do not be doing this at all like take take a lesson from me. This was like one of my not one of my finest moments at all. Probably one of the biggest regrets in my life and is driving on a substance or doing anything like that. It's completely ridiculous. Um you're endangering yourself, other people and the physical property of the community, which is what I ended up sort of damaging because I went to go pick up the dominoes on the way back, thinking I was completely fine. Ended up like scraping the side of this bridge. My car was fucked, ended up rolling to the top of the hill and luckily this guy I literally pulled up outside this pub or my car just stopped outside this pub and the guy for some reason the, the kindness of his heart was like oh just put your car in there in the um the car park round back of the pub and leave it there or otherwise obviously the police will come and do you in and i probably deserved that but this guy really just seemed to sympathize with me uh, and he took with me to, took me to the bridge and it turned out i didn't destroy the bridge at all it was completely fine it was just my car that was fucked and obviously did a massive walk home of shame and realised that I was being a very naughty boy. Never done anything like that before, I mean, or afterwards. Um, literally one of the worst things I've ever done. Should not be doing that, kids. Please don't take after me. And if you do, then you deserve a fucking slap on wrist. The first entry into the lowest tier is, without a doubt, the most infamous of messed up drugs that you just don't want to be doing. Mm. Heroin, which is, I mean, it goes without saying. Probably the most dis- destructive, hardcore drug one of the most addictive um obviously the feeling of it is supposed to be absolutely amazing and blissful but that's again part of the destructive quality of it is that it's so good that you just won't be able to stop ever loads of people i mean i talked about my uh, first proper relationship and um, my girlfriend got into heroin and she like many others was like oh yeah i'll just try it once and obviously it's very depressed and just thought oh I wouldn't mind experiencing something blissful because her like sober normal reality was so painful. Completely empathise with her for why she would do it, but no reason, no reason to actually 
uh, following her footsteps or do it in the first place. There's so many other ways to treat your depression and literally turn into drugs is not going to make you happy if you're in that sort of mindset. Lo and behold, she was like, oh, I'll just do it the once. What happened? She got addicted, even though her first time was so traumatic. That little glimpse of the, the bliss was enough to keep inspiring her to do it and she ended up almost basically dying and probably taking years off her life. Uh, very sad, really. Um, but, yeah, don't be doing that. If you've not watched Train Spotting, get that watched. That'll probably sort you out and make sure you don't want to do it. Uh, or any other sort of, like, drug horror film, especially Requiem for a Dream, get that watched as well. That'll, uh, that'll mess you up and make you, not, uh, make you not want to do it. And if that doesn't make you not want to do it, then my days, um, definitely get some help. <laughs> Xanax and other benzos like Xanax, which I'm going to talk about Valium in a bit, is, uh, I mean, yeah, they're all right, I guess. Feels quite nice, relaxing, gets rid of your anxiety, makes you feel nice and wavy, but it's easily overdone, especially when they're just in, like, that one bar. You should just, you just be taking, like, one a little quarter of it um, and seeing how you feel. But like many, like many uh, poly substance abusers in the past, I'd literally just be like, oh, I'll just take this full bar and see what happens. I remember doing that at one of my mates' parties, just when I tried to get to sleep, because I mean, I struggle getting to sleep anyway, and especially if, after you've been on it for ages, especially on stimulants like EMDMA, um, it can be very difficult to sleep for people like me who are light sleepers. And I was like, right, I'll just take this full bar, see what happens. Literally woke up 24 hours later, my, I'd literally been passed out, blacked out for ages, uh, in my mate's mum's bed. He woke me up after ages and said, mate, I've been trying to wake you up for like, God knows how long, it's time to leave. And um, I literally like stumbled all the way home, basically almost f falling into like traffic and that. Very uh, another very stupid moment. I don't do any of, any of this stupid shit anymore. I've very much learnt my lesson big time. Um, yeah, wouldn't recommend doing this at all, really. But again, I don't hate it, don't love it. Had some fun on it, and feels sort of nice, I guess. But again, very addictive, and you can easily uh, overdo it and fuck yourself up. Um, the worst part is when, when you have it like a full bar you're not even sleeping really you're just completely blacked out so you wake when you do wake up you feel absolutely dazed out your head and even more tired and there's nothing worse than sleeping too much and getting that sort of hypersomnia feeling of sleeping too much and feeling even more tired than you do when you're having no sleep so yep don't be doing that kids sort yourselves out <laughs> getting back on the positives mushies in god tier i mean it goes without saying really but we're gonna put all the psychedelics in god tier to be fair because obviously, yeah, they can sometimes feel a bit horrible, but, um, especially if you have a bad trip. But the beauty of psychedelics is that the, the sort of like some of the worst trips you can have can actually end up being like your best trips, and that's the that's the most amazing thing about them. Say like a, a bad trip on alcohol, will be it overdoing it, being sick, feeling hungover. There's not really much positivity that can come out of it other than maybe sort of sorting your life out and being like, right, I never want to experience this again. I need to give it up. So in that sense, there is a lot of, again, this is just the sort of the function of life. There's good in the bad, there's bad in the good. But there can be a lot of good in the quote unquote bad with psychedelics. And that's why there just always will be in God tier for me. And Mushies are probably my very favorite psychedelic. Um, I've had some of the most greatest bonding experiences. I've had some transcendent experiences, just some straight up personal development help as well. Sorting my the one big thing Mushy's helped me with, with is sorting my diet out, which wasn't that bad, but it just made me appreciate health and looking after myself more, and being fit, eating well, and taking pleasure in that rather than being like, oh, I just want to eat bare donuts, me, and drink fucking Mountain Dew all day. And that made me, I, I enlightened myself to that in through one of these mushroom trips. Uh, Visuals are cool, um, the feeling of it is just so, uh, it can be very relaxing, stimulating, a bit of a mix. Um, you just sometimes don't know what you're going to get with mushrooms, and that can be uh, part of the fun. The great fun as well, I find them the most fun psychedelic to take uh, overall, other than 2CB in terms of recreational um, use. Obviously, I'd say for the most part, you should be using psychedelics spiritually, but absolutely nothing wrong with using them recreationally and having a good time with your friends if you're wise, conscious, and don't overdo it, because again, Psychedelics will f mess you up if you uh, abuse them, misuse them, overdo it uh, too much. Um, and sometimes you do need that kick up the arse and to be taught a lesson. So, yeah. Big up God to you. In the Love It Me section, got to be the absolute classic, marijuana. Which, even though I don't really smoke it much anymore, um, I've actually started enjoying it a little bit more lately. Uh, but I don't feel compelled to habitually use it anymore. Uh, even though, again, I've definitely wasted a lot of money on it and I was addicted to it at 
for like a year or two and used it habitually and sort of just used it as a coping mechanism for life. I have I do I have enjoyed my time with marijuana, marijuana uh, cannabis, bud, whatever you want to call it, um, and I still do enjoy it on, uh, on on the odd occasion. It allows me to be a lot more introspective nowadays. Um, I was going through a period where it made me really paranoid, but I've sort of started to come to the realization that it was just bringing to surface a lot of the things I was pushing into my subconscious. And when you take psychedelics um, and get deeper into them, your relationship with bud becomes very different. Before I started having a lot of uh, mystical sort of transcendent experiences of ego death and just awakening type ordeals uh, weed was literally just about getting stoned blazing my head off laughing having a good time with your mates scranning bear munch uh, but after a certain time it became a lot more a lot more serious got a lot deeper and now i appreciate it in that in that regard as well um, it can really help you sort of realizing higher states of being and pure pure thoughts pure experiences of like love and bliss and appreciation of life and sort of chips away at that ego for you when you um again when you sort of had a lot of experience with psychs maybe it might not be like that for you i know the beauty of bud is that it's different for everyone you can incorporate it into your life in a in a fruitful manner but it's also easy to get lost and just be the generic stoner type who thinks they're not who thinks that it's like part of the lifestyle but basically it's just an addict um that can't handle like sober reality so yeah always will be a classic though so it's got to be in the love it me section probably will go up to god tier at some point because i mean it's just the one isn't it the beauty the, there's a lot of beauty in cannabis now it um, chills people out brings us together and it's definitely better it's a better recreational substance than alcohol in pretty much every respect so yeah big ups next up in god tier is just one of the greatest substances of all time, MDMA. If used wisely and not overdone, otherwise it can become one of the most um, physically debilitating and mentally deteriorating substances you can use. It can seriously um, give you like serotonin syndrome, which is a really horrible thing to experience. Um, physically, it can zap your energy. If you overdo it, it's one of the worst substances for like overdoing it on, I'd say. Um, you should only really be doing it every, like, well, Ideally, they say like four times a year, don't they? Three to four times. Obviously, if you're a bit safer, you can use it probably a bit more often, but just don't overdo it. Don't be taking like fucking gram of Mandy at a time or dropping bare Garys or pills at a time, really. Obviously, you can get up to it in your youth because it just happens, doesn't it? Recreational, experimental use. Um, but if you keep doing it over the years, it's going to get very rough and uh, you will pay the price. But if you use it wisely, it can be one of the most it's one of the most beautiful experiences ever just feeling that pure unadulterated love and appreciation for yourself life everything it's just oh, it's so unbelievably profound it gives me goosebumps even thinking about what it's like when i imagine what it's like to be absolutely munched out your head and you're just literally just basking in the moment everything's just so magical dreamlike and ethereal in the best possible way and it just allows you to just dance your dance your ass off for hours with not a care in the world not thinking oh i need to do this thinking about the past just literally embracing the very moment in just like a pleasurable physically in a pleasurable in a physical mental spiritual sense so yeah just one of the classics i, I don't know if it actually is md looking at it when i look at the, the, the actual picture but it does look like the crystals but yeah i can't really make it out but we'll just go we'll just say it is at this moment in time let's not uh let's not beat around the bush even more vivek fucking already have a bad habit of doing that <laughs> Another absolute favourite of mine that also has given me a lot of trouble, I guess, in the past sort of year in terms of addiction, but I will always just appreciate for the the beauty of it and uh, the fun that you can have is is a uh, ketamine, which again another favourite of people in the UK, especially in the raving scene, and you can see why, especially for people like me who sort of very neurodivergent and have trouble with sort of ADHD, autistic tendencies. Even though I wouldn't say I'm completely like one or the other, I do struggle with sort of again neuro. I'm definitely neurodivergent. <laughs> Otherwise, we're we'll making these videos. But yeah, ketamine really can just sort of relax your mind and make you very. It allows me to concentrate more, which also messes me up in a sober reality. If once I overdo it, because it impedes your concentration. Uh, I mean, your sober mind if you overdo it, but. The appeal f uh, for me is definitely just being able to, again, a bit like MD, is just lose myself in the moment and just being content with whatever is and uh, basking in that sort of no mind state. And also have had some very mystical experiences, sort of like K-hole experiences, which are very, um, can be very 
therapeutic if not if you don't overdo them because then they can get very confusing and dissociating and give you some derealization depersonalization but again use wisely um, and not overdone much like anything in the god tier list um, it is one of the most transformative experiences i reckon you can have i've had some crazy experiences where i've just literally just sort of like had some k and then bast in my bast in my bed and just f f put some music on i like to often put like nintendo or video game music that's really relaxing and sort of ethereal sounding like mario galaxy soundtrack or something and it literally like you when you close your eyes and just literally become completely still you will move around with the music and it will like throw you'll be feel, have feelings of floating it's sort of like being in a dream world that you're being like dream like a dream roller coaster and you're seeing like machine scapes and structures just with your closed eye visuals being in this big black void which sounds scary but it actually it's actually not it's so unbelievably peaceful it reminds me a lot of being in a sensory deprivation tank taken to like the nth degree um yeah very cool stuff but yeah it is something i've struggled with so uh i definitely i'd warn people to just have a sense of caution when you use these stuff because if you're anything like me it can be a, a crutch to sort of escape reality <sighs> definitely maybe that is my problem i'm addicted to escapism uh obviously mainly because of sort of traumas and that and trying to deal with them um but i guess it's all stepping stones towards eventually realizing higher states of being every little thing in your life whether it's good or whether it, whether it's good or bad is sort of leading you down the path to pure bliss and awakening or at least i believe it is eventually in your life so just one of them in it really <laughs> Another absolute classic of the psychedelic space. It's got to be DMT, but although I wouldn't put in God tier personally because I've never had a super breakthrough experience on it. I've just enjoyed the the very one time I actually took it. It was really interesting. Uh, I don't, was something that's absolutely on my uh, the top of my agenda to try again. I would love to explore it and see what it's like further and have sort of like these mad experiences that people talk about. In, not in a sort of craving way where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gagging to meet an entity me. Just letting it happen if it does and being open and accepting to that unbelievably profound experience and just seeing what my mind and consciousness is capable of, which DMT definitely seems to be one of the best for uh, getting into the sort of mad ethereal type realms that people talk about. Again, whether they're real or projections of the mind doesn't matter to me. It's equally as fascinating and I also see the massive benefit in taking it and for anyone who's wants to work through trauma on just psychonauts in general who want to open the mind to altered states and experience more of consciousness and the beauty of infinity etc but personally i've not done it enough to say that it's in god tier but i'm sure i'm sure i will do one day <laughs> fuck me predicting the future in this video now i'm getting these serious superpowers from this tier making list i have to do more of these in future it's good fun one that i really don't have much to say about it is a kratom just take it or leave it I didn't like it didn't hate it just, I don't know <laughs> I had some feeling from it I guess I can't really describe it it's just like I just felt a bit buzzed and and I had tried the red indo kratom and again sort of like mellowed me out before bed but not something I'm really asked about to be honest uh, I can see why people like it and um, personally I, I wouldn't I wouldn't ever be able to get addicted to this sort of substance it's also very not really anything you hear about in the UK there's a big scene for it in America isn't there I've heard of like kratom bars and I know a lot of um, substance YouTubers have actually had a problem with it. I know Psych Substance said he did as well. I personally could never get addicted to it, but I can see why it could for someone if it worked really well. It's something that you could keep doing every day because it's, it's sort of like so subtle, but it it does have like a lingering sort of uh, contentness to it in a sense. So I can see why someone could get hooked in it and um, use it as a crutch for reality. But personally for me, meh, take it or leave it didn't really have many strong feelings towards it at all <laughs> getting back to the fuck that category got to be the most infamous stimulant of all time and one of the most infamous substances along with heroin uh, methamphetamine which again basically like normal amphetamines speed on crack uh, it's just insanely like stimulating but has so many unbelievably horrendous side effects um again meth psychosis being one of the worst literally just being in a fucking like living nightmare world where thinking being chased by people just pure paranoid delusions it messes you up physically i mean anyone who's ever watched breaking bad and if you've not watched breaking bad as a substance user you should probably do that i guess probably one of the best pieces of uh, substance related media out there 
And if you've ever seen anything really, even just documentaries, you just know how like debilitating it is to be an ice fiend. Um, someone who's hooked on meth um, physically looks really rough. Um, it's so bad for you mentally, physically, and and again, extremely addicting. Um, stimulants by themselves are oftentimes very addicting because they're just flooding your brain uh, full of dopamine and meth, meth is on just another level to that. Unfortunately, I can very much say, I wouldn't even put it beyond the fuck that category if there was one because I've genuinely tried meth once, unfortunately, when I was a stupid polysubstance uh, abuser. And it was uh, me and my mate was uh, had this guy um, we knew who was like a Slovakian farmer and um, he just had this house near where, uh, in the town near where we live. And for some re- God forsaken reason, our mate ended up lodging with him. Um, at first, just thinking it was just some sound guy. I mean, he was a sound guy. He was a decent person. But like, at the end of the day, um, the environment that he lived in was very, uh, very toxic. Just literally because on the side, he was sort of like a meth cook. Um, it was like some pure breaking bad shit. And obviously, lo and behold, got addicted to it and... Uh, things went awry seriously and then one time I came around just thinking I was just in that mindset like I just want to do everything and try everything once um, which is again can be it's it's a noble sort of cause to be like oh I just want to open myself up to so many experiences but the desire to do it was coming from a sort of hedonistic um, mindset and I ended up smoking it through this light bulb he literally just passed me was like Hello, my friend, would you like to smoke light bulb? Sorry for any Slovakians that I've just offended by doing that accent. But he just handed me and I was like, yeah, whatever, mate, let's go for it. Had it, and he was like, uh, yes, it's meth, meth, my friend. Uh, I think I've talked about it in the past briefly, but yeah, just straight up saying it here, that was just not nice. Uh, it just gave me serious, like, paranoia. Felt horrible like I do off beak. Uh, cocaine, just horrible like any stimulant that just floods my mind full of dopamine. Just felt so withdrawn and buzzed for a bit, I was like, oh my god, this is pretty sick, and then afterwards, it quickly came tumbling down, and I just felt absolutely horrible for ages, and just thought there was, like, people behind me all the time, it was pretty shit, to be fair, definitely don't recommend it at all, please don't be doing that, just thought I'd wang this in there for the crack, I've never, never really, like, tried it, I don't think, the closest I've tried to oxycodone, or an opiate, is uh, morphine, which I've, I've had once, and I just thought, it didn't really affect me at all, just felt a bit relaxed, I guess, uh, I think I had it when I was younger, when I had this thing called Perthes disease, which is sort of this condition. Let me just look it up, I don't actually know much about it uh, anymore. Which is weird, because I have this massive like scar on my uh, on my, uh, my right leg, where my hip is. And it's, yeah, it's an uncommon condition that affects children between the ages of 3 and 11 years. Blood supply to the head of the thigh bone is disrupted, which causes the bone to deteriorate. This can cause pain, limping, and limited movement of the hip joint. And I had to go for like physical therapy for a very long time to sort me out after I, I, I had this surgery where they took out the bone and then put like a metal bone in its place and that's why I have that massive scar there and this affected me when I was very young and my uh, my uncle actually had it. it seems to be sort of like a hereditary thing in my uh, dad's side of the family and unfortunately I ended up being afflicted with that for many years when I was younger although to be fair it's, I was so young in like primary school I barely even remember it so but it definitely did have an effect on my early early life I was out of school for a, quite a long time and I think I missed out on a lot of life experiences when I was younger that sort of affected me into adolescence. So that's a sort of interesting story related to morphine because obviously they ended up giving me that when I was younger, when they put, put me under and to, uh, eased the pain when I came out of it. Yeah, it was very strange and I had some mad experiences I remember in that hospital. I remember being addicted. I think that was when I first got addicted to video games. When I, well, I was already a massive gamer anyway when I was younger, but that's when my sort of obsession with video games solidified because it just kept me so entertained while I was in the hospital for ages by myself. I often, obviously my parents were with me there a lot because uh, they just couldn't couldn't bear leaving me by myself in the hospital, um, which was really loving of them. Uh, my parents are fucking sick. Uh, but I, the video games really kept me insanely occupied, and um, I think that's when I got addicted to Turok. I was absolutely buzzed off that when I was younger, and uh, it just kept me basically sane in the hospital, and then people were bringing me in games to play and that's when I first got my Game Boy Advance SP as well that's when I first first ever had got into portable gaming as well I think my uh, someone I can't remember who got me it I swear it was my headmaster from school actually got me it which was very noble of him to be fair must have cost him a pretty pretty penny back in the day I remember the first game I played on that was uh, Spyro uh, and I've always since then really enjoyed portables don't really play them as much anymore um, but I had a long history of really enjoying portable games and checking them all out and that's where it that's where it all solidified in that bloody hospital reeling from birthday's disease so 
That's sort of a little interesting tidbit. I had absolutely nothing to do with oxycodone, but you know what I'm like, I just love chatting shit. Now, I can't quite make out what this is, I could be wrong, but I believe that says Valium under the V-shaped hole in the left pill. So, yeah, uh, I guess it is then. We'll just go with it, who cares, and it gives me an excuse to talk about it. Although I don't really have much to say, uh, very similar to Xanax. It's a benzo, so it sort of gives you that sort of relaxed, um, that the relaxed feeling of just being content with anything. Just very effective sort of a treating anxiety. In the short term, it's only a very temporary fix because you can get very hooked on it. And benzo addiction is no joke. Let's ask, ask Jordan Peterson about that. Uh, he's had some really tough times with that. And I know it's also, a, there was a Valium epidemic again in Scotland. So what about Scotland? They fucking, they love getting on it up there. But I mean, England definitely isn't too far behind. I bet Ireland isn't either, or Wales, or any English speaking uh, European country, I guess. Um, it, obviously, it, again, because it's so addicting, it's so addicting because it just, it sort of is just like a fix for the problems of life, but it's a very shallow fix. It just allows you to be like artificially pleased with everything, um, which basically can spiral out of control and make you use it habitually and again, using it as a coping mechanism for the the suffering that you experience in day-to-day sober life and doesn't actually get to the root cause of what's going on with it. Although it can be quite a nice feeling and I enjoy being able to get to sleep um, after using psychedelics or anything stimulating or even anything that just keeps me up. Uh, it, just one of them can just sort of lull you off and sometimes it's nice to just take one or two and just maybe smoke a few joints and just feel, again, just feels like just physically pleasurable but it's a slippery slope if you keep abusing them and uh, as our pal Sonic would say that's no good coming towards the end now and we have the classic nangs or whippets basically cream chargers or nitrous oxide natural that's an actual uh, chemical what you're really doing when you take this in is just replacing the oxygen in your head with uh, nitrous oxide it's famously famously called laughing gas it was used in sort of like dentistry practices back in the day as uh, an anesthetic um one of the major side effects and reason to do it is that it basically induces like l- fits of laughing and just sort of like this weird like nang 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 feeling in your head it's so hard to describe but that's actually why they're called nangs especially in australia because that's sort of the noise that it makes like this sort of like um reverberating noise in your head and it sort of like pulsates uh it can even like get very psychedelic if combined with other um, chemicals it can take out of your head and you can have very sort of intense mystical experiences check out the nitrous oxide reports that are featured on the channel People are saying that I can have like serious religious experiences and just completely ineffable sort of uh, sensations from taking it, especially in combination with other stuff. Um, personally, for me, take it or leave it. Sometimes it feels a bit horrible, uh, um, even though oftentimes it is quite pleasurable. I've, I've had it sometimes where I just feel a bit like a bit dazed and I feel like I'm really doing damage to my uh, my brain, and especially if you just huff it out the can rather than doing it in a balloon. That's really dangerous and can obviously sort of freeze your lungs as well because it literally is like pretty much freezing when it comes out of that uh, out of that can. A massive problem in the UK with youths. They've just like outlawed nitrous oxide thinking that'll solve anything. It's just going to make it go even more um, underground into the black market and everything, but... Uh, yeah, the UK government's stance on drugs is absolutely foolish anyway, so it's probably just going to get worse and worse until uh, we figure out a way to properly tackle, maybe possibly decriminalising drugs. It could be a, could be a way to go. It's worked in some other countries, but the UK is just a special case of anything. We're just fucking on another level over here. But yeah, personally for me, don't love it, don't hate it. Like it on some occasions, but... Uh, I do sometimes feel a bit strange off it. Personally, my best experience with it was probably at Boomtown 2018, where me and my mates, I think we were on MD, and we were pretty, like, tuned in. Um, I'd taken, like, one pill, but I'm so sensitive and use it very, like, sparingly that it just affects me, like, so much when I do actually do it. Um, me and my two mates basically were watching, I think, Chris Lorenzo at um, Bang High, which is this... Uh, stage at boomtown where they play all the muckiest tunes baseline and dmb and everything it's pretty much the place to be if you're into like fast bpms at boomtown um we uh just found this guy obviously selling nos i mean everyone's selling nos at uk festivals everywhere it's so easy to find because you can just hear it when the balloon inflates and everything and people are just mad for it anyway so we were like yep go on then it's so cheap as well that she's charges like 
two or three pounds for a, a balloon so we all got one and we all had it at the same time and then we all had the exact same experience of sort of like going into the third person sort of over the shoulder camera style video game where I literally re perceived myself from like the back of my own head it literally took frame out my own head for a bit and because in the in conjunction with the MDMA it can get seriously sort of trippy and psychedelic and can sort of open your mind up to again the extent of how many altered states there are out there and how much how much you can fiddle with consciousness itself. So in that respect, it can be uh, very productive. You've just got to stay safe and make sure not to abuse it, which can be very easy because it lasts for such a short amount of time, you can just keep using it uh, in quick succession and can be quite destructive and also a massive waste of money if you go for it too fast, like everyone does at a festival. <laughs> but it's just one of them, in it, really? Oh, yeah, we're at the end of it now. Well, hope you enjoyed this video and... Um, let me know if you'd like me to do something else in the future. I could just do like a pure uh, psychedelic tier list uh, because there's so many other like sort of research chemicals and things like that that wasn't featured on here. But this is just a general overview of just like the uh, sort of the go to substances. Obviously, salvia wasn't on here, so actually, I, I probably will make that video to, uh, in the future. Um, this was qu quite a lot of fun to make and um, also makes for some nice extended content that I know you guys love you love the uh, longer videos which I enjoy making to keep me occupied for way longer and um, I'm gonna keep doing that keep trying to make as many long videos as possible spend a few days working on a video rather than just sort of like churning it out as fast as possible which I am able to do because I literally uh, I'm able to sort of edit the videos so fast because I've got all the footage recorded or collected but for this one I've got to sort of like I've got to create the list and um, record it without messing up which I do so much the amount of different takes around this video is unbelievable it's actually crazy but I know you guys enjoy me just sort of rambling for some godforsaken reason so hopefully you uh, thought this was good fun and let me know what your sort of uh, substance tier ranks are in the comment section and if you've got any other videos like this in mind that I could do because I, I like doing fun little things like this love having fun me especially when it comes to substance related content but yeah absolutely just rambling my ass off now hope you guys had a good weekend and i'll see you in the next video probably be back to trip reports again back to the usual cadavers so look forward to that and if you don't then well i'm very sad